Good morning, guys. I wasn't ready to try to film it into the guys to the chat room this morning. But, uh, yeah, things don't go away. What are you going to do, guys? Let's see me while. So yeah, good morning guys, this is a chat video today. Just a couple of things, I might put this on the railway video actually, because this is all about the railway stuff today. Nothing too much about anything else. There might be a small section in this chat video, it might be a little bit off topic from trains. Not a lot, but a little bit. No trains running. I usually do run the, the trains in the background, but... Um, you know what? We'll get that done. <laughs> we get, um, I think it's T running. The city one two five set running with two carriages in its training car while having a chat today. Hope you guys having a great day. Anything nice plan for the whites? Nice and sunny. So I'm just going to run this train off just quietly around the railway while I have the chat. Not too much. Look at that, that'll be alright. So, today's video we have got a chat video. Um, so, yeah. Not gonna be super overly well then, for anything. So today's video is what we're gonna talk about. Train stuff to start with. So, the train I'm looking to get in, might not be straight away, but I'm looking to get it um, sometime in, um, the end of this year sometime. But then, then I got those things planned. And one of those things I want to talk about today is this coat, which I bought years ago. Pointed here, of course. Got an old LNER, first class and third class carriage, all in one carriage. So that section there would be first class, that section would be third class. But um, there is other topics I do want to bring on to you a little bit soon, because obviously I didn't do it on time this morning. But uh, yeah, I'll get more filming done on time, hopefully tomorrow. There'll be a live stream tomorrow about the railway stuff tomorrow. So, you guys feel for that. And of course, Thursday's a lot of um, a lot of different travel we have on Thursday because obviously it'll be the main line from Bobbin Parkway. So I am going there this Thursday, going to Bobbin Parkway next week. 
I'm thinking of going to Exeter St David's to film at Exeter. And then I've got the week after that, which is going to be another Exeter video, which will be quite fun. And then in April there's going to be the Steam Gala, um, which could be quite fun actually. I don't know how well it's going to turn out. But uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do for today's video keep turning the topic on that Try and adjust the camera so you can guys can see me but I think I angled it a little too low There you go So yeah, today's video I've got a few things to mention apart from the railway stuff I've got to mention um, I have decided to wait to get my HSD valve. I do want to get them in City 125s and it's a variety of different liveries. Um, but I want to get them as when I'm ready to get them basically. Because I want to get my real dog first. And yet you've seen one before, two years ago, but since then obviously Limbs start to be rust out and things like that, so it's the next one. <laughs> but yeah, there'll be a new one. Um, it'll be 170 centimetres. If I did get a bigger one, it would be probably 175, but they cost a lot more. And I don't want to be something that's going to cost me ways, like, especially the fruit trees with a heavy box on top. So I don't want to go crazy with, with the thing. But, So the idea what I'm going to be mentioning today is I'll slow it down a little bit. So yeah, um, the first topic I want to bring up is to be be a little bit um, what guys do you want me to see? Which guys? Uh, what guys? What guys? What do you want, you ladies and gents out there, who would want... What do you want to see from me, is basically what I'm trying to say. What do you want to see from me as a content, apart from trains? What other content do you want to see? Gaming? Chat videos, try not to laugh. Um, doll videos, you know, real dolls stuff. Or... Going to real railways, meeting up with you guys and... Have a day out there, or um, me me out with you at some point in the future. Not soon, soon, but I mean further down the line. But I mean, like, say, like 2030 or something. If I had the chance, had the money, and a few other bits, and saved up enough, I'm busy in the stage of saving up for a real dart at the moment. Um, I'm not going to show any clips of it as yet. You'll just be surprised when it arrives. Seen two I like. They're both very tall. Um, you're looking between 100 and... Is it what, 170 centimetres? Which is about my height, roughly. Maybe a little bit short. Uh, 168 centimetres. It's a slightly shorter one, but it's not by much. It's about there, for me. So they shoulder length. But, um, yeah, it is pretty cool. Um, don't know what, what other, I mean, I'm looking to get other dolls. You can customise your doll into um, the piercings, earrings, and, you know, a few other bits as well, belly piercings, and, yeah. Um, which could be an option for me in the future if I saved up long enough, but whatever I get for my birthday, so 
the topic I want to bring up now, which you might as well bring it out of the way, um, once I get my real doll, is that it is going to take a little priority for my life for a short time to why it's new and if I adjust the limbs and arms and legs once I buy it, obviously I have to wait till it turns up of course, but in the meantime, from now till August or September is when I'll be buying it. Um, so, if I get one then, assuming I don't buy another one, and I've done between then, um, or by loads of trains for half four hand. But, uh, yeah. There's topics I want to bring up which are important for me. I want to mention for my own benefit for this that I have set myself a goal with my railway, my dream layout, and I set myself a goal for my dream relationship, relationship partner for myself with her to have um, all these things that could be done for her. Obviously, we know she's not real, but she, you can use your imagination to do that. And with robotic, real doll companies now which make robotic forms which can move limbs, arms, legs, talks, sensitive when you touch her. There's all these things that you can, can imagine to be a perfect partner. Because not everyone gets along with relationships very well. So, everyone in a real relationship you can get used to spit out, mistreated, and all the other things which I personally don't like. But um, a lot of people take advantage of you for the, all the wrong reasons. So that's why I don't really want to be in a relationship with a real person. With a doll, I'm happy with being with. But with a real person, it gets no thanks. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And I wouldn't trust certain people who come back to me some months down the line you're saying, this is awful, awful. Now, the truth is, it's not my fault. It was her that caused me the trouble, not for me. But, as I said, that was quite some time ago. But I'm really hoping that I don't go into hospital this year and go down with the same infection or something very similar to last year. Or have to face with the epilepsy issues again. That is painful and it's suffering. I hate paying for and suffering pain for myself. I hate it. <laughs> I like living healthy, but I have a kind of well, more relaxed about that, so I haven't been really paying attention so much about that recently, but I really should to get myself keep myself in the shape and not lose it. But it's just according to this path sometimes when I'm you know see something I would like in a food aisle and I would like Oh yes, pizza. Bye. Yeah, you know, not quite as like that it used to be. But yeah, I still have them once every every other week. And I wanna cut them down to once a month if I could. But I am waiting till summer if I can do it. Like at least down to once a month. But uh yeah, I'm just saying basically waiting till the warmer months come in and then I can make that easier for myself. But um I really hope it would be a nice summer and not only suffering the summer with trials and challenges or what I went through last year because that died painful and I spent most of my own autumn in hospital so not great and So, I know the season, also I'm going to hope and see on Thursday there's a freight train and my, my most all-time favourite, the class 43 HST sets in the 4 car set. Sometimes they can be a 5 car set, but they're usually going a little bit further to build the extra car drum. But, this is basically a 2 car set, but I count the power car and training car. So, for me, looking at it in that formation, it's basically a four-car set, but with just the carriages, it is ten-year two-car set.
with the two power cars in real life, but in the model form it's only one power car and one train car. With all the lights and details like so all done. But yeah. Um, I am looking to get more of these units in time. And I'll probably will look into getting another build. Probably quite a few new build doors in the future, but not right now. Um, also, I'm looking to get a PS5, or probably a PS4 with one terabyte type. Which is a much further down the line, I still can't decide. So, I'm going to get the dog first, then get my trains, and then I'll get a bunch of robot stuff later on. So, that way I can just sort of focus on one thing at a time, to rushing into it. But the thing I hate the most is saving up. <laughs> which is what I'm doing, I'm saving up for it. Um, so, yeah, anything that, um, any of you want me to film for you, on my channel, my Rally channel, or my chat video channel, or my recent change of, from what used to be a Christian channel, it's now a video gameplay channel. So, yeah, I keep swapping around, but I do that because, well, not inside of all inside to the about what I'm going to call it is because I'm not really that bothered about it. I'm not that interested in religion. And there's also a personal thing that I want to bring up for myself to show you guys for people going rent and down. Mind me. I'm not going to be negative about it but I will be honest with you. But, um, basically this next topic is going to be about trains, and I'll get into it more of a bit more of a personal side of things for you. Um, the railway stuff for my dream now is coming up, so that will be coming up very soon. And uh, hopefully, once that comes up, I'm going to be building it into a way. It's really at the starting point with all the side ins, with all the HSDs that I want to collect. It's, everything is set up really well for that, and I do want to get another HSD this year. Uh, I might do one by one, or I might do two at a time. So I might get Presco Wrestling GWR, and then I might maybe in the autumn get Cross Country. It's just an option. So. But yeah, so my dream now is here, it's on this board, but I might extend it in time. Um, depends on where I end up living, depends on the space, and it also depends on how I want it to be widened points and point mode to put in, wires for the street lighting, or the road system for the cars and motorbikes and buses and, you know, taxis and a lot of other things. And there's also, because obviously with the town, it's going to have loads of little fashion shops like sweet shops and um, a bakery for like bread. And on the far side will be a meat shop like a butcher's and things like that. And then there'll be a few other bits like um, a graveyard and a church and there'll be a um, hillside with three arches in one section of the layout which will be basically like what Dawlish has got. And I do like Dawlish, to what I've seen of the railway there. I've only been there once, but I got quite a few, quite a few shots in the video. I quite like the design of it. So basically there's two lines, goes up to far past Plymouth, and then they go up, and they go down single track to, is it, yeah, Salt Ash, and then, because it goes across the Tamar, and then it goes up to two tracks once you go up past that bridge bit and then it goes up and it goes down towards this guy bombing and then it goes through Par, well Sinostor, Par, Troho and a few other names on the line. So obviously I'm not going to go that far with them out because I want to keep it as a heritage line for all my just tears and a few steam engines and the really old fashioned diesels and some of the AC electrics I would like to collect. So, I'm 
So the more the personal thing that is, I want to share my experience with um, what am I going to do with this channel when it reach, when it eventually reaches 2.8 million subscribers on the channel. Well, eventually when it reaches that, which could take a while, I'm still learning my style of editing a little bit more, and I'm still still not quite happy how I'm designing it, but I'm getting there. I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of grasping the idea how it's all working, but sometimes I'm just a little bit out of focus with some shots, and the other shots will be really in focus. This camera I use, which is a, a camcorder 4K, uh, it only goes up 16 frames, so it only zooms in 16 zooms, so it's really sort of like if you're in mid range, somewhere in mid range for a long distance, short range and mid, really small mid range, which is about there on the camera. And you get a really sharp good focus when the train's coming on the main line coming around the corner. That's really good quality, but then you've got long zoom, which is a bit blurry and too out of focus, but... Far out, a long way out of range, it's really... Well, it's not too bad, actually. It's a little bit blurry, but it's not as bad as what the chemicals are, some of the cameras I used to use, which were much worse. <laughs> so, bear with me. Um, I will get another camera for myself for filming. Um, it's just going to take time and money, which I'm going to save up for the things I need to get to keep me happy and enjoy it for all my life. That is going to work for me. I don't know what will work for you. There's some things you might find works for you, like railways, if it has your hobby, and yeah, that's great because I do like my railways a lot. And I would like to have a railway that's big enough to have two HSTs on both lines. Just on the other occasion, because I do most on the outside for the just hate to being that the radius and the of third. They can do second, I wouldn't recommend it though, but they do quite have to run around in third and definitely fourth. So the minimum you want on the HST, especially the cleaner models, they are luxury models. You, you might well collect them if you can afford them, but Bear in mind the HSTs at a starting price is about 300, 330, sometimes 260. It depends on where you get them from, and it also depends on where you, you know, where you get the coaches. Because I get my coaches on the year I got this one, which is the beginning of 2022. The unit has got this place because it fell to the table in the first seven months I got it. This is a placement unit on that one. And uh, I got that in September last year as a treat when I came out of hospital. So that was my treat for coming out of hospital after flying off that really nasty virus I had. Um, and yeah, as trains go, she's a beauty of a train. And I'd say that about the real thing as well. Seeing it in close person, I would love to get into a cab of one of those before it gets disused on the railway. I think. Personally, I shouldn't think really they get rid of them, but I think they should use them on the special event occasions where they run them in season, like on the Hercules, so they can run them with two cars set and they can go back and forth. Because they've got both power cars, they can easily do it. They can easily reserve one of those at the um, one of the bigger rail Hercules railways, and they can run in season during the diesel car, and they can run these diesel hybrid systems, and that'd be great. Then you clean out the chimneys every now and again, and then clean out the filter of electric generators, and then these things, and you just need a bit of rope to get them warmed up and going. Obviously, in real life, they would have rubbed it out to a certain point to warm the engines up, for the turbo can be fully usable for accelerating down the track. So, it is a good train. If they put a different generator in them, they could end up being a lot more efficient, I think. But, um, yeah. As for next topic, is my... What am I going to do with my other channels? Ah, the other channels, yes. As I said, I was going to start doing a bit more content on the other channels. 
Well, I'm not going to lie with that. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I will get start doing that soon. Um, the chat with your channel is because it's a bit odd at the moment. I'm kind of lost with that one at the moment. I'm kind of excited if I should do this chat with your channel or just maybe make it something completely different. Um, that's for my change channel. It's going to stay. It's going to stay as it is for now. I think the name's pretty spot on. I think I trained Scott 87 views were pretty spot on to start with, but and then it went down. Then I changed the name over Christmas and it went to find the model trains and real trains during the new year. And so that got changed quite quickly. So yeah, um, as for unboxing reviews, um, there won't be nothing in June, July. There probably will be one in September. There won't be anything in... There might be one in November. We'll see. Might get one in November. We'll, just, we'll see it in time being. October. There might be a couple of videos on the do real doll by then. Depends on how long it takes to arrive. If it takes a year, then I could be waiting a year for a film that. But once I order it, I know what's coming. And then I can get a few different wigs for it as well. Oh, oh you're going, I've got nicky nostrils. So yeah, I've basically got another few things coming up in my list that I want to get done this year. Trying to get myself in more into shape, um, eat less, trying to keep myself healthy, keep myself active and, you know, in active in a lot of ways that I enjoy. Can't share them, most of them, but um, yeah. I want to be healthy, I want to be more energetic and maybe see why I'm uniting makes you feel better for doing it. But um and also hoping not to have to face the challenges I did last year. And not have to have certain people coming into my life, you know um being bossy or negative on me. I just don't want that. <laughs> so I love her stay well away from me. <laughs> so yeah. Um for moving on with my life I am thinking of um, at some point soon, live independently. Not right now, of course, but I'm looking at some point in the future. I don't know when. I don't know how it's going to take. I'd like to have a pet dog. I would like to have my own house, if I could afford it. That would be enough these days. Uh, I would like to have my own place. Me buying it. And, you know, I had the biggest railway there, and I was going to find myself a job lot track from eBay. And it was put on the big layout properly, to extend lines on the board. Um, but yeah, there's so much stuff I want to do. Give me a good, some good names for my real dog, by the way. Give me some ideas. I thought Rosie, being that I like the name Rosie, and I like roses, so... So I had a friend that's called, called Rose as well, so my favourite flower is roses. But um yeah, it's I mean as for the anniversary of the HSDs, I am gonna get another HSD for that. Um inside of what at the moment what one I'll probably get for that. But that will probably be in November if I get one. Um then I might guess. Yes, then I might get TWR. So I might get TWR and first Great Western and then hopefully cross country in the new year. Hopefully. Um so yeah that'd be pretty cool. Um I do need to get another coach for TWR and on the far side I will need to get another T 
few carriages for the class country one, and then the power cars and the training car. But yeah, um, as for what I'm going to do about the constants table, I already mentioned this, but I am going to mention it again for some people are new to my channel that um, this constants table was used in part part one during last year in January. I did about a test for the tracks and see what sort of design of tracks I'd put into it to make it look really unusual in its design. So if any of you guys want to see that sort of video, things like putting the layouts together and test it on this constant tail before it goes, I won't be sticking anything down, I'll just basically mention out which point, make it look really fancy. And what I might do, if it works out really well, I might try it in the same spell but in smaller form on this, this board and see if it might have become something a little bit more unique in its own way. The conference table is 15, 16 foot by 7 feet I think in length. So yeah, it is basically a 16 foot ta conference table with 7 feet in diameter across. So yeah, it's pretty long and heavy. So this thing at this centre is so heavy, it's mad. And yes, this constant stable weighs a lot. I think it's because it's the frame is partially metal and the underneath is really literally huge. So I did a lot with this constant stable at one time. Huge quantity a lot. I wish I could keep it for maybe another sperm but for like another railway to put on it, but I mean it is a big old table and if you clean it up, you can polish it up and you know, put another layer underneath, but yeah, it's not a bad table, it's not in bad shape for its age. Obviously, I've done quite a lot of making holes in it to make like wires to come out the sides and then down and underneath. But obviously that's all I'm going for because I can't keep this contents table. And the smaller body, at least I can keep it smaller and it's more compact. But it also sits all my trains in and a few of my carriages as well. Also look forward to the live stream tomorrow. Um, the live stream is going to be done tomorrow. Um, I have got so many other things planned for that. But, um, yeah. I very much appreciate it for those people on Instagram, who ladies or men, who keep asking me how please. <laughs> Stop asking me out. Oh god. People, there's a lot of female, strange female people out there who ask me out a lot at the moment. I wish they would stop asking me out. I'm not interested in saying any person things. I, I feel comfortable sticking with the, a real girl things. That's how it's my relationship. Guess fine. So, um,. Yeah. As for um, future videos, what we're going to do with the April videos that are going to come up in a few months. Well, April, April. I'm trying to think what I'm going to do in April. April, I'm going to be quite busy um, with Steam Gales at Exeter and Davids with the Flying Scotsman going through. So if you guys are coming along to see the Flying Scotsman in April. Please do, I'll quite see you guys and get into footage of the Flying Scotsman while I sit next to St David's. And then, yeah, that'd be actually wonderful. <laughs> it actually would. It would be there, the Flying Scotsman would be there at 11, and has be at Exeter at 11 a.m. on the budget for April. So, if I can't see the tornado for any reason, that 
Well, the 30th of March is the one that says the 26th of March. Yes, 26th of March is unusual one that's coming through. So, if I can't manage the 26th of March, um, there's a tornado class coming down, I could send some pictures across Twitter, Facebook, maybe Instagram, and have a look. And if you've got footage on your YouTube channel of tornado class, I'll watch it. And, uh, See how the quality comes out. If it's good enough, I'll give it a like. And I might ask to where you got this shot was from. And, you know, so maybe somewhere I can film for the future. For different angles to the video. So, yeah. I'm trying to think what else to say. Um, if you are into railways and you are into the little trains as well. I have watched the railway children. It's not about around all but the railway stuff. It's more to its history with other things going on in the program. It's not so easy but yeah. The inter railways definitely watch um personally to me I don't think really you need to watch the railway children to be in the railways. You can just read its history, read some books, um Enjoy the video in the build trains and you know from the action lines to the main lines. You get some ideas from its past, from old videos that people have put up. They are out there. You can watch them. Um, and um, and then eventually, in that time, you learn that its history with your favourite trains, whatever train that could be. Mine is the HST, so. I really do my research on the HST because she is my iconic favourite train. Doesn't matter what scale she'll be in, double O, N, T, O gauge, real thing. I find she's got an iconic and a smart looking train. She does have quite a lot of different parts in the train, which I would always quite fascinates me but yeah the HST is no matter what delivery they're in you can see how standing hear them pulling up beside you on the main line and just hear this engine that's going by you and you know that that's the turbo basically winding down to a stop because obviously when the engine's moving to start very gradually out of station you won't hear the turbo to start with the turbo goes into that high gear and you hear more when you're on the train I noticed that when I was on the castle to uh, the HST GWR castle sets. That turbo I could hear in the carriages, which is quite phenomenal. And it sounds so nice. It's the engine with mixed with electric motor. Just that grind where it's basically going to high gear. Ready to do the best part of 90 miles per hour on the west coast. Obviously it's not for its full potential anymore because of the design and weight capacity. Four car sets. So that's only a two car set. I would get a couple more car carriages for the Genia. But at the moment I'm not going to do any more on these these length of a carriage because being my layout is only small and you can put two carriages in each. So because obviously the two ends are quite long as well, I've got to put that in. So yeah, for my personal life, I have got so many things planned. It's just taken for a long time. And I'll show you the Vision Wheel doll box later on, because I end the video at 10.30, because I was late. late. Um, so please bear in mind that I am going to be doing a lot of stuff for you. Um, for this future videos for my all my three channels I own. I'm not going to be posting as often on the third one or probably not very often in the second channel but mainly the train channel I'm mostly going to be focused on for my future. Just on real trains, model trains, trying not to last challenges every now and again on there. The real W will go on there once it goes on there. And there will be a book things about history with railways, I'm going to be doing a thing about that. As for the other two channels, I'm only going to post there every once in a while, I'm not going to post regularly. If I do, usually because there's a lot of things to talk about. 
Is there not a lot of things to talk about then? I just won't bother making a video and do this. I don't think I would like something new to come out. So yeah, I did have a break during the long break from Model Alley stuff for a while. From basically the 24th of December last year until basically right at the beginning, almost the beginning of February. 10th of February is when I started. So it wasn't too far off from, it was one of the two dates I could come back. So between the 10th and the 14th of February, which would have been in a few days time. But, yeah, so... This is my um, second half of that video that so I've started doing. Scenery stuff is going to be doing tomorrow with the live stream. It starts from quarter past nine until quarter past ten. So any of you guys who want to watch my videos on the live stream on the railway stuff, not just for this beauty of running right beside, um, right beside me, but you also got all the others which they run as often, like 57, the EWS class 58, with the class of 6, 87, 25, the 47 which is really muggy and quite old, but it still runs, still got the light in and all that, but it, it looks not the best. And then we've got the 33, and blue, blue, blue and yellow, then we've got the Pania, then we've got a Pug, and then we've got a tender locomotive which is really old, and it doesn't run as well as often as I want it to, but you can't always choose. And then you've got a tank like motive. And of course we've got a HST and then the GNR livery. What would be useless. And we've also got um, over there, which I'm still working on fixing on, is the bullet train. Um, I am going to try to fix it. I'm going to try to reconnect the linkage piece back on. I might try to find some glue, super glue and put it back together. So that'd be quite nice to get her back up and running again for the summer if I can get her working. Um, I am going to try my best to get her working again. If not, then I'm going to have that final alternative option. Um, as for other events in the future, like my birthday and diesel guys, I would love to go to Yorkshire Mall Railway at some point. It's quite a long way, especially for my mum. I was quite happy to go up there if I was confident enough and knew the routes by train and then I'd probably get a smaller version of the transport to get to the location, basically. <laughs> Which will cost me a fortune to get there, mind of the uh, getting there and back. And then, now I've got to head back by bus and then head back on the railway to back down to where I'm based. So it would be an expensive day out, but it will probably be worthwhile at least doing it once, once in a while. But, yeah, it definitely is something that I'll probably end up looking into doing in the future, but not right now. Um, I'd like to go on my 30th birthday when it comes around, which will be in 2025, um, and hoping to go on the Blue Corman HSTs there, which would be nice because I do like HSTs and I would really like to go on the Blue Corman at least once in my life, to see what it's like, when it's like to the other former versions of it. The only difference of the HST and the Blue Corman version compared to the GNR or the TWRs or the First Great Westerns or the Cus Country design ones are the only difference with the lights are that basically it's got a marker light on the cab on the front of the Blue Corman. That's it. <laughs> That's the only slight difference. I think it's got three main lights, two headlights basically, the two strong ones, and then there's the two outer lights which are basically called side lights. They're basically the marker lights for the, um, I think it's more for the driver to see where the front of the train is when it comes in. But the, um, the inner ones are the brighter ones and then obviously the inside have got a cab light and then you've got the marker light at the top. The GNR never had that, 
we had the two out of light, one out, three strong out of light, and then the thinner one in the inside, and then obviously the, the black bit in the middle, which has got the air horns, which I always like the look of it. It's, it's something unusual, it's the first, well, the second and a half of the hybrid diesel electric units during the 1970s, and I will definitely say. The guy who invented them must have done something amazing to really share that with one of the whole UK during that time. And the fact they're still running today is incredible. It is remarkably incredible. They're still going. And I have no problem they're still running because they are iconic trains. They're very smart looking, they're aerodynamic, and they're also designed for doing 141 miles per hour during this early time. Now it's much restricted over 90 miles an hour because of the you know, weight distribution of the cost of railway network, but also because of safety standards as well. So you think about when you accelerate a train, this is two levers. One's for like basically the gear shifter, but it's on, it's on a notch, so you have to notch it down one to take off, and then you notch it down again, and then you push it up for braking, I think. And then the other one's the accelerator, so you can notch out one, you notch up another one, and then you notch up a bit more, and then you gradually... I think, in a few years' time, I think the diesel-electric ones, the hybrid system, like HST's and the, the Javelins and all the others, I think they should ought to be automatic, when they have a system where they've got automatic gearing, and then you've got a braking on the side, but you have the manual option if for some reason the automatic system doesn't always work well, you've got that manual shift in it in case something goes wrong. It's still an option. So I think the HSTs should be experimented at this point when as much as they're still running on the bridge rail network, they're down between them and Cornwall and sometimes they'll go up to London very odd occasion, but like that like rail version HFT with the engineering form and the um, well, well the GNER um, which took an over by GWR and First Great Western at the time where well, early in the days would have been GNER, South Coast, East Coast, Intercity, Interswallow um, and there's all the others I like, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there was also Grand Central, um, I can't remember that other one, which is really unusual, you don't see it too often, it's not really common, that, that is an unusual one, you don't see, but, um, yeah, it wasn't great. But yeah, the HSTs will be, they're going to be last until 2025 at the earliest. January 2025 is when it's going to last to down here, but our country is going to be sooner. It's going to be next year for some further up country, but down here it's going to last until 2025. And this model would not go out fashion on my lap because obviously there's the television lines based around these trains. And there's gonna be a lot of HSTs and I just collect them because I like all the liveries on them. But anything else I wanna mention is gonna be ending soon, it's twenty past ten already. Um yeah, so the other thing I wanna mention is um what sort, of, what sort of videos do you want to see me in the future? Apart from train videos and chat videos and the odd try not to try not to laugh. So is there anything else, any type of changes you want me to do or any music videos? Not not music videos, but like some of the films I like, or not I will play it, but I'll show you the the, the front of the programs I watch or things I watch in general when I'm not filming. But I have to bear in mind 
nothing's inappropriate. I'm not going to propose anything that's inappropriate on YouTube. It's a big no-go for me. <laughs> so when I film the doll video when I get it, it'll be covered up. I won't be exposing anything like that on YouTube. If I show my doll off on YouTube, I'll be covering it up. So there'll be clothing covering the parts of the body. So, so this auto when it comes around once, summer's already been and gone. Once it arrives, I'm going to be here basically. Um, you know, you basically get um, the idea of how she's going to look. She might look like the first one, or she might look a little bit different. Depending on the model I get. I want to do a bit more on the other one, but that's not a problem for me. So, let me know what, um, if I do get a more expensive one, then I'll have to save up a little bit longer. But I have got so many other things to do between August and September. I hope I have no voice problems this year and sense of my epilepsy and my non catching virus is checking in the hospital for me in a few weeks. I want that again this year. I don't want to face any of those things this year at all. I like to get through my whole life and not having those pains. I would like to not have those pains. nostrils. Hmm. There we go. So yeah, I've basically got another few things coming up in my list that I want to get done this year. Trying to get myself in more into shape, um, eat less, trying to keep myself healthy, keep myself active and you know, in active in a lot of ways that I enjoy. Can't share them, most of them. But, um, yeah, I want to be healthy, I want to be more energetic and be able to sleep well every night and make you feel better for doing it. But, um, and also hoping not to have to face the challenges I did last year and not have to have certain people coming into my life, you know, um, being bossy or negative on me. I just don't want that. <laughs> so, I love her. They were away from me. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, for moving on with my life, I am thinking of um, at some point soon, live independently. Not right now, of course, but I'm looking at some point in the future. I don't know when. I don't know how it's going to take. I'd like to have a pet dog. I would like to have my own house if I could afford it. That would be enough these days. Uh, I would like to have it in place. Me buying it. And you know, I have the biggest railway there and I would put it by myself a job lot track from eBay. And it was put on the big layout properly. For instance, lines on the board. Um, but yeah, there's so much stuff I want to do. Give me a good, some good names for my real dog, by the way. Give me some ideas. I thought Rosie, being that I like the name Rosie, and I like roses, so... So, I had a friend that's called, called Rosie as well, so... My favourite flower is roses. But, um, yeah, it's... I mean, as for the anniversary of the HSDs, I am going to get another HSD for that. Um, inside of what at the moment, what, what I'll probably get for that. But that will probably be in November, if I get one. Um, then I might guess. I guess then I might get TWR. So I might get TWR. 
um, first play at Western, and then hopefully cross country in the new year. Hopefully. Um, so yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, I do need to get another coach for GWR, and on the far side, I will need to get another two carriages for the cross country one, and then the power cars and the training car. But yeah, um, as for what I'm going to do about the conference table, I already mentioned this, but I am going to mention it again for some people who are new to my channel, that um, this conference table was used in part, part one during last year in January. I did about a test for the tracks and see what sort of design of tracks I'd put into it to make it look really unusual in its design. So if any of you guys want to see that sort of video, things like putting the layouts together and test it on this constant tab before it goes, I won't be sticking anything down, I'll just basically mention out which point, make it look really fancy. And what I might do, if it works out really well, I might try it in the same spell but in smaller form on this, this board and see if it might have become something a little bit more unique in its own way. The conference table is 15, 16 foot by 7 feet I think in length. So yeah, it is basically a 16 foot ta conference table with 7 feet in diameter across so yeah, it's pretty long and heavy. So this thing at this centre is so heavy, it's mad. And yeah, this comes from the wall weighs a lot. I think it's because it's the frame is partially metal and the underneath is really literally huge. So I did a lot with this comes from the at one time. Huge points a lot. I wish I could keep it. Or maybe I was sparing but for like another railway to put on it but I mean it is a big old table and if you clean it up you can polish it up and you know, put another layer underneath but yeah it's not a bad table it's not in bad shape for its age obviously I've done quite a lot of making holes in it to make like wires to come out the sides and then down and underneath but obviously that's all I'm going for because I can't keep this contents table and the smaller body at least I can keep it smaller and it's more compact but it also sits all my trains in and a few of my carriages as well also look forward to the live stream tomorrow um, the live stream is going to be done tomorrow um, I have got so many other things planned for that but um, yeah I uh, very much appreciate it for those people on Instagram, who ladies or men who keep asking me out, please. <laughs> Stop asking me out. Oh god. People, there's a lot of female, strange female people out there who ask me out a lot at the moment. I wish they would stop asking me out. I'm not interested in saying any person things. I, I feel comfortable sticking with the, a real girl things. That's how it's my relationship. Guess fine. So, um, yeah. As for um, future videos, what we're going to do with the April videos that are going to come up in a few months. Well, April, April, I'm trying to think what I'm going to do in April. April I'm going to be quite busy um, with Steam Gala's at uh, Exeter and David's with the Flying Scotsman going through. So if you guys come along to see the Flying Scotsman in April, please do. I'll quite see you guys and get into footage of the Flying Scotsman while it's sitting at Exeter and David's. And then, yeah, that'd be actually wonderful. <laughs> it actually would. It would be there. Flying Scotsman will be there and then her husband at Exeter 
11 a.m. on the 30th of April. So, if I can't see the tornado for any reason, that, well, the 30th of March is the, the one that says the 26th of March. Yes, 26th of March is unusual one that's coming through. So, if I can't manage the 26th of March, um, there's tornado class coming down, I could send some pictures across Twitter, Facebook, maybe Instagram, and have a look. And you've got footage on your YouTube channel of tornado class, I'll watch it and uh, see how the class comes out. If it's good enough, I'll give it a like. And I might ask to where you got this shot was from, and, you know, so maybe somewhere I can film for the future for different angles to the video. So, yeah. I'm trying to think what else to say. Um, if you are into railways and you are into the little trains as well, I have watched the railway children. It's not around, around all but the railway stuff. It's more to its history with other things going on in the program. It's not so easy but yeah. Into railways definitely watch um personally to me I don't really need to watch railway children to be in the railways. You can just read this history, read some books, um, enjoy the video in the build trains and you know from the action lines to the main lines. You get some ideas from this past from old videos that people have put up. They are out there. You can watch them. Um and um and then eventually, in that time you learn that it's history with your favourite trains, whatever train that could be. Mine is the HST, so I'm really doing my research on the HST because she is my iconic favourite train. Doesn't matter what scale she'll be in, double O, N, T, O gauge, real thing. I find she's got an iconic and a smart looking train. She does have quite a lot of different parts in the train, which I always quite fascinates me, but yeah, the HST is, no matter what delivery they're in, you can see how standing. Hear them pulling up beside you on the main line, and just hear this engine that's going by you. And you know, that that's the turbo basically winding down to a stop because obviously when the engine's moving to start, you won't gradually out of station. You won't hear the turbo to start with. The turbo goes into that high gear and you hear more when you're on the train. I noticed that when I was on the castle to uh, the HST GWR castle sets. That turbo I could hear in the carriages, which is quite phenomenal. And it sounds so nice. It's the engine with mixed with electric motor. Just that grind where it's basically going to high gear, ready to do the best part of 90 miles per hour on the west coast. Obviously, it's not for its full potential anymore because of the design and weight capacity. Four car sets, so that's only a two car set. I would get a couple more car carriages for the GNR, but at the moment, I'm not going to do any more on these these length on the carriage because female layout is only small and you can put two carriages in each. So because obviously the two ends are quite long as well I've got to put it in. So yeah for my personal life I have got so many things planned. It's just taken for a long time. And I'll show you the Vision Wheel doll box later on because by end of the year. 10.30 because that's quite late. Um, so please bear in mind that I am going to be doing a lot of stuff for you um, for this future videos for my all my three channels I own. I'm not going to be posting as often on the third one or probably not very often in the second channel but mainly the train channel I'm mostly going to be focused on for my future. Just on real trains, model trains, trying not to last challenges every now and again on there. The real dog will go on there once it goes on there. And there will be a book thing about history with railways. I'm going to be doing a thing about that. 
as for the other two channels, I'm only going to post there every once in a while. I'm not going to post regularly. If I do, usually because there's a lot of things to talk about. If there's not a lot of things to talk about, then I just won't bother making a video into it unless I think I would like something new to come out. So yeah, I did have a break during the long break from Model Alley stuff for a while. From basically the 24th of December last year until basically right at the beginning, almost the beginning of February. 10th of February is when I started. So it wasn't too far off from, it was one of the two dates I could come back. So between the 10th and the 14th of February, which would have been in a few days time. But, yeah, so, this is m my um, second half of that vi video that so I started doing. Scenery stuff is going to be doing tomorrow with the live stream. It starts from quarter past nine until quarter past ten. So any of you guys who want to watch my videos on the live stream on the railway stuff, not just with this beauty of money on the website, um, right beside me, but you also got all the others which they run in as often, like the 57, the EWS class 58, with the class of 6, 87, 25, the 47, which is really muggy and quite old, but it still runs, still got the light in and all that, but it, it looks not the best. And then we've got the 33, and blue, 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 and yellow, then we've got the Pania, then we've got the Pug. And then we've got a tender locomotive which is really old. And uh, it doesn't run as well as often as I want it to, but you can't always choose. And then you've got a tank locomotive. And of course we've got a HST and then the GNR livery. What would be useless. And we've also got um, over there, which I'm still working on fixing on, is the bullet train. Um, I am going to try to fix it. I'm going to try to reconnect the linkage piece back on. I might try to find some glue, super glue, and put it back together. So that'd be quite nice to get her back up and running again for the summer if I can get her working. Um, I am going to try my best to get her working again. If not, then I'm going to have to find an alternative option. Um, as for other events in the future like my birthday and diesel guys. I would love to go to Yorkshire Mars Railway at some point. It's quite a long way, especially for my mum. I was quite happy to go up there if I was confident enough and knew the routes by train and then I'd probably get another smaller version of the transport to get to the location basically. <laughs> which will cost me a fortune to get there, mind of the uh, getting there and back. And then, now I've got to head back by bus and then head back on the railway to back down to where I'm based. So it would be an expensive day out, but it will probably be worthwhile at least doing it once, once in a while. But, yeah, it definitely is something that I'll probably end up looking into doing in the future, but not right now. Mm. Um, I would like to go on my 30th birthday when it comes around, which will be in 2025, um, and hoping to go on the Blue Corman HSTs there, which would be nice because I do like HSTs and I would really like to go on the Blue Corman at least once in my life, to see what it's like when it's like to the other former versions of it. The only difference of the HST and the Blue Puma version compared to the GNR or the TWRs or the First Great Westerns or the Cus Country design ones are the only difference with the lights are that basically it's got a marker light on the cab on the front of the Blue Puma. That's it. <laughs> That's the only slight difference. I think it's got three main lights, two headlights basically, the two strong ones, and then there's the two outer lights which are basically called side lights. They're basically the marker lights for the, um, I think it's more for the driver to see where the front of the train is when it comes in. 
but the, um, the inner ones are the brighter ones, and then obviously the inside have got a cab light, and then you've got the mark light at the top. The Gini, I never had that. We had the two outer light, one out, three strong outer light, and then the thinner one in the inside, and then obviously the, the black bit in the middle, which has got the air horns, which I always like to look over. It's, it's something unusual. It's the first or well, the second and a half of the hybrid diesel electric units during the 1970s, and I will definitely say. The guy who invented them must have done something amazing to really share that with one of the whole UK during that time. And the fact they're still running today is incredible. It is remarkably incredible. They're still going. And I have no problem they're still running because they are iconic trains. They're very smart looking. They're aerodynamic. And they're also designed for doing 141 miles per hour during its early time. Now it's much restricted over 90 miles an hour because of the you know, weight distribution of the cost of railway network, but also because of safety standards as well. So you think about when you accelerate a train, this is two levers. One's for like basically the gear shifter, but it's on, it's on a notch, so you have to notch it down one to take off, and then you notch it down again, and then you push it up for braking, I think. And then the other one's the accelerator, so you can notch out one, you notch up another one, and then you notch up a bit more, and then you gradually... I think, in a few years' time, I think the diesel-electric ones, the hybrid system, like Hinch's Teeth and the, the Javelins and all the others, I think they should ought to be automatic, when they have a system where they've got automatic gearing, and then you've got a braking on the side, but you have the manual option if for some reason the automatic system doesn't always work well, you've got that manual shift in it in case something goes wrong. It's still an option. So I think the HSTs should be experimented at this point when as much as they're still running on the bridge rail network, they're down between them and Cornwall and sometimes they'll go up to London very odd occasion, but like that like rail version HFT with the engineering form. And the um well, well the GNR um which took an over by GWR and first Great Western at the time. Well early in the days would have been GNR, South Coast, East Coast, Intercity, in the Swallow, um and there's all the others I like, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there was also Grand Central, um, I can't remember that other one, which is really unusual, you don't see it too often, it's not really common, that, that is an unusual one, you don't see, but, um, yeah, it wasn't great. But yeah, the HSTs will be, they're going to be last until 2025 at the earliest. January 2025 is when it's going to last to, down here, but our country is going to be sooner. It's going to be next year for some further up country, but down here it's going to last until 2025. And this model would not go out fashion on my lap because obviously this the television line is based around these trains. And there's gonna be a lot of HSTs and I just collect them because I like all the liberals on them. But anything else I wanna mention is gonna be ending soon, it's twenty past ten already. Um yeah, so the other thing I wanna mention is um what sort, of, what sort of videos do you want to see me in the future? Apart from train videos and chat videos and the odd try not to try not to laugh. So is there anything else, any type of changes you want me to do or any music videos? Not not music videos, but like some of the films I like, or not I will play it, but I'll show you the the, the fronts of the programs I watch or 
even though I watch in general when I'm not filming. But I have to bear in mind, nothing's inappropriate. I'm not going to propose anything that's inappropriate on YouTube. It's a big no-go for me. <laughs> so when I film the doll video when I get it, it'll be covered up. I won't be exposing anything like that on YouTube. If I show my doll off on YouTube, I'll be covering it up. So there'll be clothing covering the body, parts of the body. So, so this auto, when it comes around once, some has already been and gone. Once it arrives, I'm going to be here basically. Um, you know, you basically get um, the idea of how she's going to look. She might look like the first one, or she might look a little bit different. Depending on the model I get. I want to do a bit more on the other one, but that's not a problem for me. So, let me know what. Um, if I do get a more expensive one, then I'll have to save up a little bit longer. But I have got so many other things to do between August and September. I hope I can avoid problems this year in terms of my epilepsy and my non catching viruses to check me in the hospital for me in three weeks. I want that again this year. I don't want to face any of those things this year at all. I like to get through my whole life and not having those pains. All nights, not having 